Welcome. Good evening, morning, afternoon, whatever it may be for you here at Nace. It's going to be myself. Why not? For the first time all season long, joined by Laz in the grand finals of the open circuit of the Nace circuit itself. As I'm very excited, the premier season has shaped up to be one of a lot of, I'd say, expected results. Maybe an upset here or there, but either way, the final is going to be jam-packed. Laz, how are you feeling tonight? Yeah, feeling good, man. It's good to be here. And uh, yeah, it's going to be our first time here on the desk together for the Grand Finals. But yeah, this is exciting. This is going to be a good matchup. And I mean, we're going to bring up that schedule here just in a couple of seconds here. But I think this is, again, like you talked about, this is kind of going head to head. You know, you got uh, CSUF right now taking on Syracuse Orange. So this is kind of a big matchup in the sense that both these teams of, you know, being fourth place and third place in the playoffs have now made it to this Grand Final stage, which is uh, something definitely to behold. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I was talking to you a little bit about it before the game and before the, the show as well, that I myself have participated in the league for this season in Varsity Premier, and seeing the Open Premier now find its way onto the finals where the land finals are going to take place, I believe, tomorrow or the next day, that's very exciting to see that things have culminated to the final and all be all for these players who have worked so hard all season long to see all of the fruits of their labor come to fruition. And I, for one, am excited to be a part of what we have to show for you guys today, as it has been a long time coming. And this is my second final uh, back to back, and I'm excited to be <laughs> here again. It's going to be a lot of fun. And I'm sure that the players are as well, as we do actually have uh, a lot of players who have made their way through both advanced, open, main. They've been from top to bottom all over the place. California State University, not too familiar with them from top to bottom, but even still, I think that individually, they have a lot of talent in their roster, but going under the other side of where I'm a little bit more familiar with Syracuse, Cameron and Sofer, they've been in pretty high level competition teams in the ECL, I believe at one point for Cameron, uh, and obviously mm -hmm. in advance at the top level for both he and Sofer, these two teams are going to clash and it's going to come down to probably a lot of prep work having to have been done. No, definitely. And that's the thing too, like even just kind of talking about these rosters, but kind of, you know, paving the path about what, like how they got here. I mean, there's been some really good matchups, you know, like Syracuse was able to win 2-1 against U, uh, UCF uh, Knights Gold. They were able to e also beat, you know, another team as well, 2-1. So that a lot of their matches have really gone full distance, except for like that opening round, really. But that's kind of the other thing here for uh, for CSUF. Is that i mean a lot of their games were all two zeros they were looking really good they were you know doing quite well and then they had a bit of a close one where they went against nucs and uh yeah. i mean they they came close on that one but they were still able to get that nice little uh, golden ticket get themselves here yeah extremely close you, you look at syracuse who had that 9 to 12 comeback in the semifinals versus clemson <laughs> and then not dropping a map until getting here is going to be pretty impressive for the other side of things csuf they fight tooth and nail against every opponent that they come across. They beat the number one seed in Northwood two to one, and that's going to be something that they're going to be very happy about. They're going to knock out one of the contenders that should have potentially have been here from the theoretical side of things at the very beginning of the season, drafting things up. And that's going to be something they can look towards now. Maybe, okay, not everyone is going to be as unbeatable, undefeatable as we would have thought going into this season. They have a lot of tenacity to them. And the roster, or excuse me, role change from the side 
of the uh, Syracuse team, from Op Sofer to Op Cameron, who's now also the captain, supposedly. That's going to be something they're going to have to adjust to really quickly as well in their own right. Having a role change like that is significant and clearly not affecting them that much, but even so, you're no fool. You can imagine how that might take a toll on a player if they begin to lose. No, for sure. And I mean, that's the other thing too, is I mean, now we're in the grand finals. I mean, these guys are fighting for that prize pool for 5k, right? So this is, you know, there's a lot more pressure that rides onto this. It, it starts to get a little bit of that nitty gritty where pressure is really built up to the fullest extent because this is it, right? I mean, no mistakes can really happen. You have to play your most flawless way of CS here and to kind of get yourselves, the, you know, the crown victors. And this is where I'm going to be curious for both these teams, uh, what they can be able to find themselves. Because like we said, one team has been, you know, kind of steamrolling and all, like on paper with two zeros. The other team is really really had to fight their way to get here, which doesn't necessarily paint the full picture, but it definitely can give you a little bit of a, a glimpse of, you know, can they handle that pressure mm. now? I, I have no idea, but the vetoes are going to be super important, obviously, with the map pool. Yeah, one thing that bodes really well for them, as I kind of touched on earlier, is this going to be an online final. It's not going to be that land final. Obviously, they would have loved to have that, but having a little bit more comfort inside of either your arena or your home or wherever you might be participating from does give you a little bit of that comfort of mind, knowing that you don't really have a whole lot on your shoulders other than playing the game and experience does favor the side of Syracuse also. So that's something they're not going to be too worried about either. They go into this game and they're like, okay, we've been here before at higher levels and other divisions and other tournaments with more on the line. Maybe not the money. The money is going to be good, right? But in terms of a head-to-head -head competition where you actually fear for your reputation, so to speak, this one probably going to be on the bottom of their list in recent history in terms of Sofer and Cameron, for example. But everybody else, you look at CSUF, they might have that pressure. They'll have that eyes on them. Can they do it? Can they hit their shots against some of the better players in this tournament in general? Yeah, and again, I think, you know, we both have been touching base on this, but I mean, the maps are going to be really critical too because oh, again, yeah obviously these teams are going to have their favorites and you know the ones they don't want to play so i think that's going to be the big determination for this is yeah. how well you know the captains or you know the igls can really you know cipher through what the veto process True. is going to be because that's where again you got to be really smart and you want to try to play into your advantage but also you might want to try to throw a little bit of a curveball so that mm -hmm. is going to be critical in this moment here too and we talked a lot about role changes and you know different identities a little bit within these teams so yeah that does kind of add that not a hiccup i would call it but you know a little bit of a, of a change up that could really, you know, cause a mixture change now. Yeah, I didn't actually really even think about that. You, you were touching on it yourself a little bit there, and you say it even now that the map pool is going to be important. It's not easy to build up a map pool of five, maybe even say six maps across one season with five players, right? It's a little bit more of a problem to even get three that you feel comfortable on to be able to say, yeah, we can pick into these if we need to. But then to be going beyond that and like playing maps that your opponents are more comfortable with that you haven't touched upon, maps that you really don't have a choice but to float in a decider because all the maps that you had your comfortable picks on are now gone. These are things that I feel like both of these teams will have pretty much down pat having cores that have played together for a while now. It was kind of just like plug and play for the most part, but even still, again, not easy to be able to do that. And should they have a longevity for this five for both teams, then they should have already gotten themselves at least comfortable enough to go the full way in a grand final best of three and say, yeah, we can take you on all three maps that we play, whether it's your pick, our pick, or the decider. So if that is going to be the case, I'm excited to see what they have to bring. Yeah, and you know, I don't even know for me, like, I, I mean, there's always kind of maps you want to see, but I think sure. for me, like, I'm kind of, I'm kind of keeping an open mind to everything right now. Like, I think we're still kind of exploring, you know, like CS obviously is, I wouldn't want to call it new, but I mean, it is new, I guess, if we'll say that, right? So we, there is still different, you know, mechanics we're working with and people are still figuring out <laughs> some really cool gimmicks on every single map. So that's what always makes me excited. And now that we're at the grand finals, do we get to see something a little bit different from both these teams? Do they have something they've been, you know, kind of saving for the, for the end result? do they want to you know preserve for this moment but i guess that's where we're gonna to have to wait and see and, that, and that's what excites me the most is that there is so many teams that are being creative in, in every yeah. Uh, retrospect yeah i think that's really fun it's really interesting to see how the game is also developing as the days go by we were talking about how they update it constantly it's starting to feel better and better by the day the maps are looking a little bit better obviously fixing bugs collision issues and as you go through it I'm sure a lot more is left to be discovered. There's a lot more new to be seen. And I'm excited really at the end of the day to see how these teams work around the little changes that come through. I think that uh, one of the most recent ones in yesterday's update was the, the Mirage A bomb site now has an outline, a red mm. outline that you can see where to plant the bomb. And that might not seem like a lot, but I feel like it is. I feel like it gives <laughs> you a lot more leeway to be able to push it to the very limit to how far you can get that bomb to be planted to play for yourself around a clutch, et cetera, et cetera. And as those little things begin to compound, Counter-Strike 2 is going to look like a much more different game than it was before it became Counter-Strike 2, right? Like, once that initial drop happened, I feel like give it maybe, like, 
two, three months, give it until the next end of the season for uh, Nace, that's where things are going to look crazy. And this is the moment where you just need to say, okay, we can shoot back. So <laughs> let's let's be creative as far as we can with what we're given. No, and, that, and that, again, that's such a good point you brought up too, because again, like since it's ongoing, things are changing, maps are getting, you know, tweaked a little bit here and there. Mm -hmm. And like, you know, I think every map had, you know, some big adjustments, you know, with some uh, like ledges and things like that. And, and some of the, I think even the lineups for smokes are a little bit different as well. Like I know Ancient oh, yeah. had a couple, couple weird little ones, but that's the thing. Like you just kind of have to roll the punches right now with the state that we're in with CS2, but it is obviously progressing in the right way. But that's what I was talking about is like, how fast are these teams reacting to this? And for this matchup too, being in a grand final, I mean, that's where I want to know, like from an update that was yesterday yeah. or just the other day here, it's like, how much have you been able to like, just get yourself kind of back into, you know, feeling comfortable. There wasn't too much of an issue. I don't think like anything right. like devastating, but enough where you just have to be aware with some of those like minor changes. Yeah. I don't actually, I don't really do, I didn't really do a whole lot of research on this or not, but, uh, I wonder if there is a video or a YouTuber of some kind that does like reviews of what every update to Counter-Strike brings because it used to be like three clicks Philip who used to do things like that. And I love yeah. seeing the changes. And a lot of the time Valve also makes updates that they don't really show you everything that they changed. I've noticed, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like they just kind of like add something or move something and they're like, oh yeah, by the way, <laughs> didn't have that in the patch notes. So those no, are definitely. things that like Monacy, for example, I mean like mm -hmm. just for one player, like players like him, they'll find that instantly they'll they'll know exactly what it changed what's new what's different what can be abused what can be uh utilized to the best of their strengths and now obviously these are collegiate level teams they're not they're not being paid to play eight hours a day and theory crafts yeah. smoke after smoke but even that being said i feel like it's sometimes those accidental moments where you find something or learn something that might be the case and in collegiate that that gives you the edge like every day of the week i feel like that little extra effort and i don't know how much effort these teams have been putting in but to be in the finals right surely they've been cooking up something in the pot i mean it doesn't take you shooting everybody in the head every match to be able to get there right no definitely and the good thing is is that we actually did just get a little bit of feedback for the map pool so the first one looks like it is going to be anubis moving over to overpass and then if we make it to it it's going to be ancient so this is kind of a, a very interesting you know map pool in my opinion i don't really feel like you ever get to see like ancient and anubis really in the same thing all the time but the fact that we get to start on a map like anubis for me is is kind of exciting because that's again it's one of the more recent maps that were added i mean recent is probably not the right word but it is a, mm -hmm. a a map in the pool but i think again people are still figuring out how it works because there was one point where ct side was the best then they were turned into the whole t side was just you know op so this is again where we get to see a lot of that creativity from both these teams and then going to overpass i mean that's a classic that's a banger and then ancient yeah i'm always down for some swampy waters yeah figuring out how it works that's really going to be the name of the game and that's gonna be the name of the game here for us as well as we do figure out things just to get everything proper and ready for you guys to enjoy this final as it was intended to be so we'll be back in just a minute here as we get things squared away but don't go anywhere the nace open premier finals will be underway in just a minute <laughs>
All right, I hope you guys still with us, still awake, still alive, as 10 players in the server are, but not for long, as the first pistol round of this best of three is underway. We get to see who will come out on top for the finals of Open Premiere and already into the A site with Utility raining in. The execution's looking to happen. Yeah, you can already see some good Molotovs coming into place, so this is a good starting, and that's a beautiful way to get some multi-kills. Okay, that's a good way to start a T-Pistol round, and they get the bomb down, and they're starting to look just like they're taking this round by storm, and yeah. it's just down to two lonely CTs now, why not? And uh, I don't like this for them. That was one hell of a statement to be able to burst into this site with such confidence. Finding those frags. Even finding two back, though, is Senshi from the bottom of A main, but now both tied up, cutting up those loose ends, and making sure that the last player standing... He's not going to have an easy go of it. Clearing everything around each bend and each corner. The time is of the essence more than anything else. I'm unsure if there is a kit in sight, but time is not going to be on his side if there's not. And it looks like he's just going to have to forfeit this one and try to find a couple of kills, which he does the one and taps away onto the next no ammo left. Looked like it might have landed for a few of those taps there, but nope, not to be the case. Christian will survive. And CSUF, we're going to take that pistol. Yeah, a nice way to get things started off. I mean, again, they were able to find that opening with three kills right away when they're going into that A site. So, I mean, that's kind of the, the crazy thing, right? I mean, you could see Syracuse were kind of slow to get, you know, themselves back into this. And it was really just winning the one-on-one -on -one duels that were kind of the, the way they got the numbers back under control. But they just looked a little bit uh, disoriented after that whole uh, bit of a round. But, yeah, nice one coming in from CSUF. That was a good way to make themselves a statement. You can see a full commit on the buy. And, look, they're just going to pop this. They might even just swing out of B main. Yeah, that's going to be them now just trying to, oh, get a couple of these frags. So far, the pistol's not having too much success met by the firing squad. Gun down, very little to show for that round. It looks like it'll be CSUF running it forwards and continuing their run of form from the previous with the guns that they have upgraded. It's going to be great to have a nice little bonus round here. Yeah, definitely a good way for them to get some momentum built on their side. This is, uh, again, good statements. But I like that Syracuse was trying to go for, you know, a little bit of, you know, a commit just with the pistols. Now we have a full investment coming in. The M4s are going to be placed. Only having one A4. That's actually pretty interesting. But either way, I mean, utility is going to be a little bit lackluster in this. So, I mean, mid control is going to be, again, the name of the game right now. And you can already see he's getting overwhelmed. Overwhelmed indeed, and oh, pinned against the wall by Red Zone, who finds the both of them. Damage is fluid, and so are they as they liquidate the A-bomb site. Get to plant that bomb with ease, and Cameron on the rotation back's got a lot to deal with. Yeah, these are good, again, just kind of getting little consolation prizes right now. And all of a sudden, I mean, with the man advantage, they had like a four on two, and now making this down to a 2v2. The Molly's actually going to push that camera in, so that's going to be a bit of a problem. Good noise cue coming in, too. Another Molotov. Insult to injury, but look at this. Both the T players here from CSUF, they're just kind of posted up on this. They're waiting it out. These CTs got to get moving, though. Press the gas a little bit there, and once they do, they do exchange damage enough to where the 1v1 could swing it either way, in either direction. Not fighting with the position from Ritter out of the rows, etc. The Cypher Moose is taken upgrade and talk about a bonus round they'll take that every day of the week gun will not stand into the next but even so they'll be very happy with themselves for claiming it yeah this is a good way to find themselves with that 3-0 this is a really good start you see this is a good a bit of a replay that comes in nice little bit of highlights but again the fact they were able to find those first two entry kills inside a middle like that without getting traded out that was huge that was allowing them to have all the control in that last round for round number three but we are in round four Bad at all and kind of just running into the meat grinder right now with what they've got nothing really going their way other than a 5-7 running it down towards the bottom of a main with the off now looking to put him in his place missing the shot but clock pull gotta be a little bit careful about that one overzealous in that as that's going to be a reinvestment they have to make gun with no ammo in it and shen's got to move he's got to bounce back and forth the this and they go for the double peak one after another and q's good for the trade it had to be because that would have gotten a little bit dicey there as they retrieve the sniper, they'll be comfortable at 4-0. And this is a really, really dominant lead they hold very quickly into this game that took, admittedly, quite a while to get underway. Now we can just kind of hang around. See how this one, with the AWP in the hands of both Red Zone, and his opponent on the other side, Carry this round as there's two in mid, they go for the spot. Nothing deep smoke-wise for the CTs or Ts. It's just going to be a late duel, 15 seconds deep. 
spamming back and forth to smoke. It is going to be just a moment of caution for both of these teams playing around them, knowing what's lying on the other side more likely than not. Oh, yeah. But, I mean, the fact that, again, it's a 4-0, this is still, I mean, this is, again, a big statement coming in from CSUF right now. With the op going into play, this could really change things around here for Syracuse, but, I mean, they're going to have to be able to find something. They need to find that first entry, and they may be able to find an opening in some kind of fashion. But, again, there's another op on the other end, and okay, yeah, that's going to be a good shot from Bray. A little bit of an over peak coming in from the CT side, trying to get that information, and it does kind of go back with the trade, though. I'm still posted, ready for the E-Box peak, but more than anything else, he's going to have to be ready to move because they're losing bodies back and forth. One mid might have been held down for the moment. The bomb left on his lonesome as the actual hit comes through a main. They don't have the C4, and time is at least in their side to be able to go and grab it without having to rush too far forwards too quick. They can be worried about a player still inside of the site, though, looming around the bend. It is going to be the double kill from the top side, from the top runs, a triple overall, and around back, finally, something to speak for for Syracuse, who are on the board. Yeah, this was a good good reply back from Syracuse because, again, I mean, they just kind of, you know, held their positions. You know, CSUF, they didn't actually put a lot of pressure in that round. They just kind of played it a lot slower, and that actually backfired. I mean, the last, you know, four rounds they were able to have in their favor, they were being really aggressive. They were just, you know, kind of barreling into the sights. The one round they tried to slow things down with a bit of a pace, it, it completely backfires on them. So now you can see us. Look, they're just going to run into the site, and already they're just going to try to contest this, and they're able to find two openers. But Cameron can open up the bomb site on his own. Rike kicked off with his headshot. Going to be now just dancing with smokes all across, trying to sniff out something. As just over the top of the smoke, there is going to be some heads to be seen, but the AK not able to remove either of them. Instead, spotted out first and foremost with Christian relying on his teammates' deep plant in the main to find the kills for him. Rightfully so, as it has worked out just like that. Oh, a little bit confused with oh, no! the no-scope under the turn! It's half-blind, albeit, but Shen, even so, gets styled on by the end of the day. Oh, you hate those moments so much. I mean, you think you got the kill, and then you kind of pull your crosshair away from that. Oh, that's just such a problem, but this is, unfortunately, that it happens to the best of us. I'm just going to say it right now, but boy, oh boy. CSU up right now, I mean, doing a great job to get themselves back into contention. They were able to win that second round after they lost their first, making this the 5-1. Being aggressive, looking like the name of the game right now. Why not? I mean, look at this. They're just going to barrel into this A site. They're just going to contest right now against one player. This Molly might be able to kibosh the plan just momentarily. Momentarily. ET pressing through the ball top at the front side of camera is going to burn and get slowed as the shots land into him and... It's not going to do him any favors, though. The sniper from above will avenge his death. Jumping into the ball top of a teammate, though, is Bray. That's not going to be easy once those rifles <laughs> make their way back. But the op still on half HP has his chance to have some more impact into this one. If he can get a quick pick, that might make this a lot more doable. Red zone, though, he seems to be ready, lying in wait for anybody to come his way. Walk into his line of sights, and it's a closed line into your sight. As the line is held by the Famas, Bray down a double. Huge from Senshi now to make this one doable, but the op not able to react in time. He saw the flick, not the shot. Q still standing at the pillar side, dancing around it like a... You can't say that in red zone. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to support him from the backside oh, of the main before no. things get too dirty. Yeah, and we're going to see a timeout coming in right now. I mean, I I'm glad I they kind of took it right out of my mouth because I was just going to say, like, I think Syracuse, they need a moment here to kind of figure out what they have to do a little bit differently because this is out of control now. We're talking a 6-1, and CSUF have been able to put themselves, worst case scenario, a 6-6 kind of situation. I mean, they're going to be able to have, you know, six rounds moving into the second half, but they've done such a great job just putting a lot of pressure points against the CT side, and I think for these guys, they need to figure out what they want to do a little bit differently. This round's going to be hard just given the money situation. Kind of sitting at, you know, that low 2000s, kind of all the way up to $5,300. I mean, it's it's a mix, and I mean, I don't think this is the round they want to, like, put a work around the rifle or the op or something like that. They probably just want to go for the lighter purchase, try something a little bit of interest, but yeah. CSUF, man, they just, they keep putting on pressure and it doesn't look like it's really causing a lot of sweat. On these gun rounds, I feel like for the CT side, correct me if I'm mistaken, I just haven't seen them really go for anything coordinatedly aggressive nah. anywhere on the map. It's really just been them sitting back in their own, hoping that once the play is made by CSUF, it's going to be one that favors them in terms of angles that they hold, that they won't be blind, that there will be enough support and time. And really, it's kind of 
Putting a choke hold onto them as the default quickly turns into an execution once the dust is settled, and CSUF is more likely to not out on top in terms of the kills they have by that point as a result of not having any map control here, Syracuse. Yeah, now we're starting to see that CSUF, they're playing things a lot more slow. So this is going to be that, you know, kind of tactical approach where they want to, you know, just go for a big execution into the site. Kind of an interesting move considering that they, they should know that they, the other side here for Syracuse are going to be on the pistols. The execute's coming in now. Cameron coming in with the deagle. This could cause everything. This could be the thorn in the side, but he gets just eaten alive. And now they're just trying to get the bomb down. That's going to be successful. Oh my god. Deagles, what? what? Excuse me? Surely not. Oh, I don't know where those kills came from, but from somewhere deep in the hearts of the CTs, they're going to have to pull away with an amazing round from Shen's Eagle as well, as he's the closest, but doesn't seem like they're going to go too deep into this one until the shot rings out. The man noted to be. We'll find his one and nothing else, nothing more. Off retrieved. CSUF, this is, this is looking like their map. I don't know mm -hmm. who picked it, but seeing... How they're playing right now, they're just kind of running all over it. Yeah, they really are. I mean, that was a bit of a, you know, a scrappy round. I mean, a bit sketchy. Like I said, they were kind of going for a full execute on a, like a, a light purchase round for pistols. I mean, a bit scary in my opinion. I thought they were going to kind of wait things out, maybe get a feel like they've been doing and just kind of go as a group. But it came right down to the nitty gritty of a, you know, 2v2 essentially. And they do retrieve the all back. So that's going to be good here for red zone. Also the off here in the hands. For Toxic, he's able to have it too. So, I mean, we're going to have to see, you know, what Syracuse is going to be able to find. They need to find that opening duel. As of now. The opening duel is not being pressured by anyone except for California State. They're looking to work their way up slowly but surely towards one point of the map. And that's been the recipe for success, most typically. It's given them everything to play with and for. The pace change not yet to be seen from Syracuse could come back to bite them once again. As Utility, not exactly running low for them by any stretch, but certainly after a few moments, once they begin to dump their last few mollies and smokes encounter, oh, they're going to be in no. for some trouble. But just over the top of the Molotov, Red Zone's going to spot that out. It looked like Cameron might have had an idea for it, but no, it won't wait, It won't work. It won't pan out. And now to the site they go. Why did inside of the smoke is his other teammate essential ball not having that anchor to play with? And hold on, are they going to plant this bomb and not be aware of him? No, they won't. They'll spam him down and into the smoke. Another kill to everybody. Not even having to be seen from Syracuse before they're taken out of this round. Yeah, I was getting a little bit nervous, man. There was somebody in the smoke just kind of hiding in the back. I think that was uh, Single Wish. I mean, he was just kind of waiting things out. I love that attempt. That was a little bit scary here for, for California State. But, I mean, either way, I mean, it gets, you know, good reaction. We're going to an 8-1 right now. And, and, again, it's just been full steam ahead here right now for California State. They've just taken Anubis so far by huge strides. Guns are going to be back out again. Utility is going to be a little bit more limited right now from the CT side, but they need to do something a little bit differently. They play a little bit more aggressive in middle. They're able to find an opener, yeah. but it's an immediate trade. Yeah, it's a start. It's a, it's an attempt at something a little bit more. I don't know how you could say maybe useful from the guns that they have, the lack of utility you mentioned. They can at least try and make good with what little they've got and with one more flash to go it's in the hands of senshi and he might actually have to use that in a retake if they have bodies to even warrant going for it at this point but no down through mid shen looking to catch a timing not seeing anybody too wide but the awp posted at range with the ak ready to trade there was no chance in hell he was ever getting anything but a bullet to the chest yeah exactly and i mean that's the thing too like you said i mean now this noise key is going to come in for cameron so he's going to be able to hear a lot of information and this is where, you know, California State, they're just going to run through mid. They're now they're going to go through camera, go right into this A site. So now, Single Wish is kind of that one player where he can really maybe able to find something. But no, it's a bullet right to the cranium. Cameron tries to do something a little bit more, but it's only a one and done. And just leaving it down to one CT on a one on three. And yeah, why not? This is not the yeah. best odds. I'm not a gambling man, but <sighs> I don't know. Yeah. Sent sheep. Already having kicked off this round with one kill. Won't be able to do much more than that as Famous has just been... Famous. Famous has just been getting pretty much every kill that he needs handed to him on a silver platter. It's post. Shoot. Dead. Thank you. Move on. Next angle. Post. Shoot. Dead. All right. Next. <laughs> and every time he gets himself into one of those positions, it seems like he delivers. Red Zone, he's had those moments as well. The only difference being is his rifles from top to bottom. 
They feel like they're just that little bit more consistent. And talk about the top. Hughes, 15 and 4. Mm -hmm. Dominant, to say the least, in the first half, no less. Yeah. On track to close this game out in 13 sooner rather than later as a crab walk through mid will be caught by Red Zone, who crab walks himself on the other side. And yeah, this is just the one rifle, the one M4A4 and the one MP9. The 5.7 is starting though. The damage exchanged, a very strong pistol to play with, might I add, and he makes good of it. He definitely does, and now, I mean, this is getting a little bit sketchy again, so all of a sudden, the big advantage here from California State, it comes down to a 2v2. Rifle's still going to be in the hands of Toxic, so he needs to be able to find this. His teammate's close on by with a 5.7. Red zone, he's got an inkling. Oh my goodness. Full haircut coming in for him, so there we go. They clean it up. Another shot, making it a no-scope, too. Making this a 10-1. to 1. Now, we're coming to the last round of the first half. Why not? I... Oh, man, I don't even know what to say. He heard me bring up the CT side up one time and then decided he needed to be spoken about a little bit more. Red zone there, obviously the hero of the round, and even making it yet again another show to behold with the no scope to close. Something we've been not unfamiliar to in this so far. But now the double up setup for the CT side. As previously stated, there was a rule change at the beginning of the season. Sofer taking the AWP roll off of his plate to get on the Camerons. And now that the both of them wield it, we're going to have to see if it'll do him any different. A good one for one, I have to say, now knowing that there's at least info that all four players were in mid, very little else to prepare to go. One more for the boss. A lineup for the double. Not going to connect, but the AWP does around the bend. Nice flick, but the USP finishes the job no less. And Cameron from out of nowhere gets a no-scope of his own. Yeah, not a bad way. You can see, I mean, again, Q's kind of started things off with a 16 and, you know, 16-5, I believe. And that's a good way for them to kind of finish things off into this this first half. But finally, a little bit of life coming back from Syracuse. They finally get themselves a second round. I Shit. felt like it was, oh, it's just taking a long time. But, I mean, at least they can get themselves some momentum going into the second half. And I'm going to be curious if they can kind of carry that on into this or if it just gets kind of, you know, just pulled right under them. So that'll give them a little bit of motivation, a little bit of a, a little bit of something. fire lit from beneath their rear ends as they seem to be very quick onto this A-bomb site. They want to run it in, similar to what we had seen from CSU. But hold on, that's a Miss Molotov. He jumps and he bumps into his teammate. Now Christian's got place to play from. He's got a crossfire to set. And he can take contact whenever he pleases. Tucked in, will they clear him? The answer is no. One after another, he's going to have to be better than his teammate. He has to re-practice. If he doesn't, he's going to get run down from the side as well. And this site is not looking fortified at all. Yeah, this is just Christian just putting matters into his own hands. He's able to find oh the triple my. with QC, able to find the double. Oh, man. And like you said, that I mean, the one critical thing about that round, and I'm so glad you brought it up, was honestly the Miss Molotov, because that Molly was going into heaven. That would have flushed him out, which would have allowed them to get themselves a bit more comfort, a bit more space in that site. But the fact that his teammate jumped in front of the person designated to throw the uh. utility... And that's what I was talking about pressure. That's what I was talking about making, you know, not making any mistakes. But unfortunately, that one tactical thing or technical thing, yeah. it was a huge blunder. Yeah, and I think on top of that, I think this is a, a good moment to say where, where the heads might be at after a moment. Like, obviously, you're the player who got hit by the Molotov. Yeah. You're like, oh, my God, I can't believe I just did that. You're the player who threw the Molotov, and you're like, I can't believe he just did that. And then everyone else mm -hmm. is just sitting there like, well... This is the world we live in, and this is where we find ourselves in the reality of 2 to 11, stacked at the odds up against them once more, once again, fighting down even at range. The distance being closed by the MP9, or excuse me, MAC 10 somewhat, still no chance for the A1S of Red Zone, who wants that little bit more to say into this game. Continuing his run, not an AWP, but on the CT half at the start, a rifle. Yeah, I mean, again, this is, I mean, a good little bit of a, a note here for CSUF fans. I mean, they, they get the opener. They're starting things well. They take down Cameron again, like you talked about in the pre-show. He's one of those players. You know, he's been able to play in ECL. He's been able to do some pretty cool things in terms of his experience with different teams he's been on. But now that threat's going to be removed. And, oh, man, okay, that's a decent shot. Second life, I guess. But he's is going to go down to 11. And now, Famu's able to find two. Eats them both up with the MP9, making this still the advantage. This is low HP across the board that can be easily abused as both of them are close enough to range between one another, but CTs are on the run. <laughs> Absolutely trucking it out from the B-bomb site. One's tucked in it. The lowest of the bunch, Q's. If he catches one kill here, that would be absolutely massive. Not ready for it is Shen as he walks forth, trying to spot out somebody with the time being where it was. He had no real other option. Sen Shi trying to do the same. 
He's the same end. Uh, another low HP player to get him in the back. As he falls down onto the baskets, he hopes maybe I'll be safe here. Nope, not quite. 12 to 2. This is looking like a lead in the series for CSB. Yeah, and again, we were talking a little bit about, you know, just this is the replay, obviously, a little bit of highlights from the, the this previous round. But again, the fact that, you know, they used that, you know, fun mechanic, obviously, with the nade into the smoke and that was able to get, you know, things started off and catching players off guard. And I still feel like you're able to, you know, really find those moments where people are not ready for it. But talking about not ready for it, they're just going to barrel into this site now. Syracuse is trying everything they can, but it's just looking like an absolute slaughter. And uh, before I can even finish my sentence, this thing's done. Yeah, that is one hell of a way to kick off Open Premier Finals. It's talking about the ability to have a map pool going into a best of three final, no less, where you think that you might have a decent chance on all of them. This not a great opening, not a great look, and a lot more to be seen, hopefully, from the side of Syracuse going into that second, if we want to see them on a third. I really, really like how... The side of the T's in the first half were unwilling to waver from the game plan imposed from them because it was working so well, and that's just a great call to make when nothing really is bending anywhere else on the map. You may as well keep playing it slow, finding your picks, and then bombing into the site once you've got it, and there's not really anything more to it because nothing was happening in opposition. No, it really wasn't. Again, CSUF were, again, just coming in with a full statement in the first half. I mean, the fact they were able to just get into sites, not get traded out, they're winning duels, like, pretty much two to zero like they weren't getting traded at all that was the key of success here for these guys i mean they just took them you know anubis and they wanted to just do a bit of a speed run and they gave us yeah. that right now and syracuse I, I talked a lot about momentum you mentioned this too and that's kind of the hard thing right now is how do you get yourself out of that i mean you kind of have to now think that the second map is map number one and you just got to start all over but that's yeah. not an easy thing to do yeah, I mean, I guess the, the thing that you can say is that at least they've had their hands on their mice trying to play around the game. They've had a little bit of a warm-up, so to speak. Now they can kind of just hunker down and know that this is their time. Map 2 has to be where they shine, and there is a little bit of a buffer between that. They got us right back on track in terms of the schedule, it feels like, or at least as close as we could have gotten to it, as we do have a little bit of a break between us and that second map. Until then, we'll see you in just a bit.
Los Angeles Comic Con is back at the LA Convention Center, December 1st, 2nd, and 3rd. Meet stars from hit movies and TV series like Matt Smith, Jamie Campbell Bauer, Elijah Wood, Sean Astin, Rain Wilson, and so much more. Shop over 800 exhibitors and artists. Experience the vibrant cosplay community and immerse yourself in the gaming and anime hall with tournaments for Mortal Kombat and Street Fighter all weekend long. Get your tickets for LA's favorite comic, gaming, anime, and pop culture convention at ComicConLA.com. And what was to see over on Anubis. It wasn't much from the side of Syracuse, unfortunately, for them, but uh, the side of CSUF, they certainly put on quite the spectacle. At every turn of point, that they were running away with not only the individual fights, but also tactically a little bit more sound as we saw a fluff here or there. And last, you were here for it all. <laughs> yeah, definitely was, and uh, you and I both got to go through this uh, this quick uh, little bit of a race through a game, and yeah, some amazing work that came in from CSUF, honestly, they just took this map so quickly, a bit of a speed run, they wanted to make a statement, I think they definitely did that here for map number one of Anubis, going into the second, which of course which is going to be overpass. Yeah, a couple of these shots I'm watching back now, honestly, were a little bit more impressive than I'd even given them credit for at point in time. There was an off headshot click in there, the last bullet USP headshot coming out from Q's and the second pistol of the match. I mean, I, I gotta give it to them. At least they uh, they made it look good uh, in terms of the kills that they had gotten. So that's one thing to move forward towards. But yeah, overpass you mentioned, right, is our second. That is uh, certainly a, a different change of pace, a little bit more vertical than we were ever going to have seen before. But in comparison to a map like Anubis, maybe this is where they can show us that's their bread and butter in this best of three series. Maybe, just maybe, this is where they turn things around. Yeah, I mean, that's going to be that's gonna be the thing is Overpass is such a different map than Anubis. But again, this is where we're going to have to see if the Syracuse can get themselves back into full contention here because you're going to have to just take that pill, swallow it and move on and that's kind of really the name of the game for them right now yeah and speaking of games uh la comic-con is producing an expansive and exciting gaming esports and anime experience in the west hall of los angeles convention center on december 1st to the 3rd your pass gets you access to the gaming stage tournaments the stream studio with all your favorite streamers the free play zone with the hottest pc and console games and the mix with over 10 indie games with devs on site click the panel below and use promo code level up for five dollars off your gaming pass yeah, definitely make sure to use that uh, that promo code because that's going to be really clutch. But yeah, definitely a good point. But we are going to go right into it. Woo! And uh, not a bad way to get things started. Like we said, I mean, uh, we're kind of right back on track. And Syracuse now, they're going to be starting things off. And uh, we're going to have to see what they're going to do a little bit differently here. And, and, and a lock and ride on the pistol. Lock in, boys. Lock in. Now more than ever, they're going to need to live by that. As they walk up through connector, slowly but surely, sound being made more quickly towards the bathrooms now as they do continue their way forwards. They eventually pump the brakes slightly in cues. He's going to be the oh, one to catch that scary. first spot. That flash over, actually a smoke. Oh. Still going to get shot in the back of the head. His teammate finds a kill as that transpires. A headshot better from him. Q's oh. still on low HP with the fade away into the smoke. I can't believe they were able to find that. I mean, yeah, there's going to be site control here right now for Syracuse. And I mean, they get themselves in here for the time being, but you can see CSUF, I mean, the fact they're able to find some duels or even able to do more damage, man. They are just popping heads. They're able to just connect every single shot. It's a little bit of a, a little bit of a sketchy one though, but now players are going to flood on out. The locks are going. The Moose is able to find something here and there it is starting a bit of a cleanup, but all of a sudden it's down to the 1v1. A P2000, can he be able to find something? Seven bullets in the chamber? Yes, he will. That is great work from the CT side. From top to bottom, from start to finish, it looked like there was a point in time where that was going to run awry. It looked like that was going to be the final breaking point for them, but the Dink met with a kill. The bomb site taken met with another one. And from then on, it was just a matter of the cleanup crew coming and doing their job, which they do perfectly at the end of it all it does get a little bit dicey of course with the hp being where it was in the 1v1 but honestly that's the best that you could hope for given a pretty rough situation even so in the post plan no especially yeah and i think it was Q's right i mean he was playing kind yeah. of like really aggressive just watching washroom like that i mean he is so lucky he was able to find another kill despite getting you know taken down to 10 hp or 2 hp or something oh yeah two kills yeah two so kills. i mean that's that's insane <laughs> i mean i thought he was a dead man walking but guess not and uh 
Yeah, at least the bomb goes down here for Syracuse, so that's going to be really important. Now you can see they're fully equipped with uh, a lot of rifles, so this round is, is critical for both these teams right now. Interesting little angle here from Red Zone. The elevation is going to be something not really easy to read as the buy from the T-side back back with a double kill inside of the toilets. Gun lost, but double kill found. They'll take that exchange every day of the week. It's not equivalent, but it certainly favors the bold as Red Zone is that Christian. On his lonesome right now, I think, in the V-Bomb site. There is one player deeper towards the graffiti side, but with that flashbang, it'll stall out the singular T at the bottom side of it. If he can get one kill and fade off, there might be a world where they can regroup and make this happen. There's just one. Transfer out of the next. But Q's not going to allow him the time to readjust. He gets that one and makes it a still one-man advantage for the CTs. Yeah, and this is the utility. Again, double smokes that are available right now for Syracuse. So, I mean, yes, they can go for a bit of an A exec if they want, but they have to still worry about two players right now. From California State to kind of lock things down. So this is going to be really important in terms of getting this. The smoke comes in. Shen's going to be able to time this. But it's all about getting this kill. And that's going to be a good start. But now, Famous trying to get everything done with the MP9. Just a little bit of a tickle and not a kill. And now Cuse is by himself. Spamming away. I don't know how he gets away with it. But he's down to the 1v1. This timing of bold players. It's all about in the smoke. It's all about this moment. Cameron, a seasoned player. Will he be able to find something right now for Syracuse? I have no idea. He's just hanging out, grabbing the bag, chilling, and looking good. And he should be able to clean this up, and he does. And we finally get a retaliation for Syracuse. I guess better late than never, and it's certainly not too late in this game for something at that level to go through. It's that double that really picks it all off, and I love to see that red zone confident in his own shoes and his ground and when he does he makes it that much easier for them Q's always seemingly a pretty consistent factor on this team even finding a dink onto the final player before falling there if it was an AK in his hands it could have been a different story but that wasn't the case instead we go 1-1 yeah, such a good point. I mean, the fact they were able to get this second round, I mean, again, now it just really makes uh, the money game a little bit more problematic right now for CSUF. They have to work with just five sevens. We've seen them in, you know, positions where no matter what position they get in, they just seem to get frags. So we'll see if that's going to be the case with the five sevens. I mean, again, a pistol that can do just a crazy amount of work too. But either way, it looks like they're going to just go back to a 3-2. Nothing kind of adventurous, nothing crazy. Why not? So uh, pretty yeah. standard. All right. Do Snooze something. Fest. Do something. Post them with a stick. Two players actually getting a flashbang to fight Monster Tunnel with something as they do take that peek. There is players on the other side in which they meet. Shen, though, has to be careful about how wide he goes when he clears these angles. He's going to be oh, his maker no. as a result of it. Too far against that wall, and Red Zone's going to be able to pin him against it. That D coming to life already and finding them a man advantage, a 50 second ladder mark, and nobody else spotted towards toilets. That's either going to be A, a B execution imminent, or B, them walking up towards the A site. Too many letters to keep track of, to be honest. Yeah, and I mean, now with Syracuse being down the player too, this just, again, adds a bit more pressure. They still have that utility, but okay, they get a good trade. So that rifle is going to be removed. So Red Zone was the one that was holding on to it. And now they're starting to clean up this site just a little bit. They're going to rush the plant. They do go for the fake. Now it's finally coming in, but the pistol, I don't know about this. Oh, it's Wait, a little bit of running. There's more damage. What is happening? Nobody covers the bomb planter. I'm not sure how that's allowed. He's running back towards long. Senshi's all the way towards the back side of the toilets. Now they're going to be able to take these fights with the body they've got. Running them down, finding the one, and knowing where the last one's placed from. And it can either see no team, way! they've done it. It's turned onto its head. How have they managed a round like this? I don't even understand. I mean, there was so much good control coming in from Syracuse. They looked like they were just kind of posting up. But again, it was still a little bit, you know, dicey in the sense that they were trying to go for the fake plant. They were just getting themselves like, do we do it? Do we not? Do we fight? And again, pistols in that close quarters. That's what I was talking about, man. It's lethal. Now a rude awakening has been brought into this. And I just cannot believe the fact that we say, see that California State take that round away. They stole it. That is not going to be the easiest pill to swallow a little bit too girthy on that one as we go into it again we run it back in syracuse similar story to what we had seen on the pistol except a lot faster once they do eventually get their way to the top side of the toilets and that might catch them off guard that might make it's a little bit more complicated for CSUF, who are actually both tucked towards truck. It's going to be one plane fade off of the other. They're going to fight at the same time, as a matter of fact. The MP9, less 
up on him means that he'll fall first. The red zone not able to do much more after that, but Q's on the scene. Again, the ever consistent factor for them, having already found two. No bomb plant, not yet. You're gonna have to get a kill before you get that one done, big man. And Q's doesn't look like he wants to allow it. It's another weapon. He retrieves another kill and another round, and a man lit to fire right now is Q's. Yeah, he was able to be one of the top breakers in the first map of Anubis, and, and now he's sitting himself in a position where he's 9-2. and two. The next closest player has four kills. So, I mean, this guy's definitely making a bit of a statement for himself right now, and he's an ordeal right now. And Syracuse, they're down 3-1, and they're down a map too. So, I mean, they're going to do the hero buy. They're going to have one AK. Shen's going to hold on to this, and this is a, putting someone in the driver's seat. See where they decide to take this vehicle. Roll towards short is really good, and actually it's Kipno coming through, helping out. Maintaining that lead as a result of it. They're not going to be too, too happy with how that one panned out, but even so, there's only so much you can do after the oh, fact, except no. hope to regain and not having a great go at it as it stands now. Door blown, CTs with vision, but it's not necessarily a one sided affair in terms of how easy that duel will be the cts have to be careful and they are they're going to peel all the way out and just keep the pressure on them mentally from here on out i really like that play because again with that first nade being missed mm -hmm. then they had to throw a second one so that was good information for syracuse but the one thing that's going to be given away is the fact that csu app they ran they actually like fell back but made a lot of noise oh. retreating so i'm thinking that they knew that this is open but uh christian's just going to get the job done get himself a double just sitting in monster posted up waiting and a 4-1 now, why not? And we're starting to see that trend uh, kind of going back in full effect again. Let me see how long it will last. We're taking four pieces. In this tournament that they fought, the very bitter end, which could be Closer to them than they realize, they are unable to spring into action. Ooh, good flash. Blinded though, and Red Zone dealing with his own issues, succumbs to the fight forward from a multitude of T's swarming after the fact, just below, circumnavigating the sight lines of the player at party. Gets them that opener and now puts Q's in another multi frag potential position though, if they don't clear him well enough. Yeah, and him missing a shot. Yeah, giving up that noise cue a little bit too. Dead. That Molly, yeah, he's a dead man walking. There he goes. This is all about multi-kills, and Bray might be able to find something. Oh, no way. He gets away with it. The plants no! are two. Yeah, why not? That's going to be good. And now making it back to a 2v1. He's got bomb. He knows exactly where it is. It's let loose just ahead of him with either player. From any position possible, he knows where one was just a bit ago. Not really... All too much to do with that information, though, other than take a duel at some point, because they know where he was. Fading inside and out of the smoke. He's got a nade. He's got bomb positioned even so. Needed to be picked up by Senshi. He goes in for the fight with the Galil. Looks like for a moment he might have missed out on his chance. But he gets the round, gets the win. Doesn't quite get the plant, but at least he gets the AK. Yeah, I guess the AK, but again, that's some good money earned, uh, I mean, here for CSUF too. I mean, they get those multi-kills. They're just kind of, again, kiboshing the money system right now for Syracuse. So, yeah, they're going to get themselves a round after three losses in a row, but I mean, look at what they have to work with. No bomb plant means that they gotta go with like just two AKs with just three Mac 10s. So this might be a Mac daddy rush here because they're gonna try to put the, you know, the Mac into full order. Looks like the smoke's gonna come in. Toxic's just gonna you know, just run in and barrel in and he is able to find himself too. And you can already see CSUF, they were not ready for this. And this might be just a full bombardment right now from Syracuse and a great execution. Yeah, this, this, that, that'd be something for a round to walk through with is the Mac 10s don't exactly or I'm, excuse me actually they do get everything that they needed I didn't see the double kill coming out from one of them but I think that's so for to do it gets that money into his pockets injected through camera even finding one the last two players they're so far removed that if they want to go hunting they very well can I mean it's not like the weapons they have are going to be too profitable for them moving down the stretch if they can buy back right if they could buy with that awp and that m4 around anyways there might be a world where they can get the head armor they need with bray being able to buy for himself and kind of shut down whatever they throw their way so if they can take the guns out now that really makes their worth all that much higher no chance though Terrorists win. no chance but i, I mean buy. 
Yeah, I mean, and, and like you said, it's good that, you know, Red Zone's able to keep... Oh, okay, well, interesting play, but... All right, well, Famous is going to get himself a little consolation prize, but the Ops still in the rotation here for CSUF, so that that is a really good thing for them, and now they can transition this considering their money situation, right? I mean, again, him and Famous are the only two players with, you know, the big boy guns, and everybody else is just going to work around that, and we've seen it, so we'll see if we can find that again. Not a full force. Two players well below the amount of money that they would need to buy up into that next with the loss bonus being where it is. And they still don't go all in for it with the pistols that they've got. If they had maybe a little bit better weaponry and armory at that point of the map, they might have been able to shut that one down. Red zone, though. Uh, Peter Rock in a hard place. Put scope. Not going to mean anything more than the one, though, as they do get that off the T side, get to play with it. And the CTs are kind of going to be left scratching their heads up to how to play this next one with a mixed bag. They're going to be at 4-4. I would yeah, have money. that personally. I don't know. I, that's just I don't know. Yeah, yeah. That was a that was kind of a weird round. I mean, I was kind of thinking they were going to use those, you know, those two rifles. Well, rifle in the op a little bit differently, but I mean, they tried to be you know be a little bit more clustered together, and it yeah, it just yeah. kind of crumbled pretty quickly, right? Yeah, and the guns bought down to zero, but nobody else did, and that's what the, that was yeah. the most confusing part for me. Yeah, and this is just a interesting purchase for them. I mean, I guess they just really want to preserve funds and really yeah. have a good buff in for round ten, but. I don't know. Yeah. It's, it's all good. Oh, this, this is gross. Oh, shadow advantage and still no kill. That's a shame, but oh. Uh-oh, we've been here before. We, we've we been here before. Why not? We have been here before, and uh, yeah, it's happening again. Maybe, I don't know, unless camera comes up massive. Wow. No, he's dead. And I cannot believe CSUF... We're judging them on their purchase. We're like, why? Why wouldn't you buy guns? They're like, hang on, guys. They're like, we're better with pistols anyway. Watch. Hold my drink. I'm going to show you something. Let him cook. It was in the blueprint. That's like, it's like in the strap book. It's like, don't buy when we probably should, but after that, win. Yeah, that wasn't in the script, though. That's weird. So. Yeah, that's weird. Yeah. Not mine, anyway. They might have given us, like, dupes. Yeah, so maybe. That way, like, we don't see the ending and, and spoil it and leak it, you know? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, it could be. Make us feel like we're in the world. Anyway, with these AKs they've got put up, and oh my god, was that red zone that just did that? That was disgusting! Just dumpstered the player at the deep side of connector with no chance of survival. Cameron gets his, known to be at the bottom side of the shore. Now he and red zone, the two titans of this round, well, one of the two being titans more accurately, but they're going to meet in contact in just a few moments, more likely than not. Yeah, we haven't really seen a situation like this before where both, you know, both teams find, you know, quick trades and they put themselves back into a 4v4. So at least it's equal footing, right? I mean, this is a good note for uh, both teams and that Molly's going to do a lot of damage in red zone. He gets out alive. A nice counter Molly, but Cameron actually commits to that fight. A little bit greedy, a little bit bloodthirsty, but yeah, it's not going to work out at all. So this is a good uh, little bit of reply and good trades coming back. Syracuse, actually, they find themselves two for the price of one. Gonna feel real nice. Now going into the end stages of this second, excuse me, this first half before the second. Use a round win. Hughes has been their kryptonite, but not this time around. Shut down. Nobody else really stepping up to be the one to wear the pants on this team just yet. As the lead is just out of reach for the side of Syracuse. They have a moment to reset as we do actually have a player disconnect that'll be red zone if i'm not mistaken who will be rejoining us in just a moment but even so talking about this game and how it's transpired as of right now a lot more tenacity to the side of syracuse a quickness to their their map control not only towards toilets but towards short water no willingness to be able to give it up they want to fight for it at every turn and so far more often than not i feel like they do find that opener and if it's not an opener it's a massive 5v5 where they've got frontal control of the a site no, definitely. I mean, that's that's a really good point because, again, there was such a good start that was coming in, and then the fact that it's just, like, slowing down, but Syracuse kind of brought themselves back into this, uh -huh. it's been really impressive. And, that, and that's, again, that's been the biggest thing I was wondering is can they get themselves back in fighting contention? Can they look good and feel good? And I was getting a little nervous for them. I'm not going to be honest, but now they brought it back to a 5-5, and it's, uh, it's definitely come to a, a tie game. It's all come to a head. This is, of course, the T side for Syracuse. So mm -hmm. going mm -hmm. into that CTN, we hope to maybe see even a little bit more. There's just a lot to be done from them. And very little yet to be seen from their CT side, all things considered. 
uh, on this, uh, excuse me, on uh, Overpass in recent for me. I haven't really seen anything from them. I've, I've tuned in here and there for my matches, right? But it'll be exciting yeah. to finally get a culmination of all of the work for the season on a map that they look to be a little bit more comfortable on. But they run into this B bomb site. Talk about a quickness about them. They run it through, they run it in, and that actually is going to be the first time that's come back to bite them in the beginning stages of it. Is there's one burning at the bottom side of water, hurt. Not fragged, but a 4v4 will ensue and the smokes continue to plume. Yeah, it's a good nade that comes in from short too. So, I mean, now a good uh, little bit of a pickup as well from Q. So he's able to find something. And now these CTs are starting to just fire on all the cylinders. They're just winning these gunfights left, right, and center. And there it is. And that's a great retake coming in from California State. And I was getting a little bit nervous too because, again, they had a double player pushing into water. But then you had Syracuse pushing out a monster. So just things got a little awkward. Things got a little uh -huh. weird. But... Yeah, they got themselves back into a sixth round, and we're going to the last round for the first half, just like that. Last round of this first half. Time sure flies when you're having fun. Time, time sure flies true. when you're shooting guns. Yeah, that's in true. In a video game. Not in, oh, yeah. Please do not do that in real life, unless you have yeah, to. Keep in the search. Yeah. Well... I'm going to be curious with Syracuse want to go for this in this situation. Again, they, they've tried putting some good pressure in connector. They've tried, you know, a couple A-pops. Right now, they do actually just barrel out of this connector and no trades really at all, actually. So they're going to be able to win those gunfights pretty well. A good molly comes in from Qs, but can he find himself two more? Yeah, why not? He's done it before. He'll do it again. And the four, he'll do it again. That's... Motto to live by. Really? Oh my gosh, from this round, Hughes once again comes to life. I can't believe that he's been such a consistent factor for them across these two maps. But if there is one thing to be said, it's that they've got a lead going into the second. And speaking of a lead, maybe get a little bit of a lead in life as you finally maybe want to settle down and open up uh, your mind at college. Maybe, just maybe, you want to open up a world of opportunity with Army ROTC. As an Army ROTC cadet, you will learn to be a guide a mentor, and a decision maker. Something that Counter-Strike is no stranger to, as we have a lot of decisions to be made about how we're going to go about the rest of this game. Let's see whether or not it'll be Syracuse to be, you know, uh, maybe, a, maybe a little bit of a, a leader in their own regard. Yeah, it's just a matter of time, and we'll have to see what's going to happen through this pistol round. CSU up there, just kind of rushing through connector again, making a lot of noise. So some good information given here from Zen. So he should be able to hear a lot of this. It's a question if he wants to fight this. He does look like he's trying to back out of it, but he does find this one. Can he find more? He will not, but some good damage inflicted. Now, Shen just chilling, playing between the dice and the truck, spamming away. The patience has wh whittled away, and so will the bodies as they fall one by one and trying to fight through a smoke with the duelies. At least a high rate of fire couldn't net him a couple of frags. You're already what? down three. What is going on? Oh my lord, he's got more than enough ammo left into the gun if he wants to take this last duel and Bray is low. If there was ever a time to 1v4, it would be now, and from the truck, he gets it done. Hype yourself up, son. You've gotten yourself back into the game. Oh my goodness. 19 right now coming in toxic that's huge and again a position where you're like okay there's no way maybe one kill all of a sudden the duelies man they're starting to sing they get themselves the pistol round which did not look like it should go for them but hey they're gonna take it they're gonna fully equip themselves mp9s with the m4 and again there's no bomb plan either so i mean this is a bit of a like, you know, scrappy round in the sense that there's nothing to work with in terms of guns here from CSUF, and they're just gonna run into this blender, maybe. Yep, yep, and yep. Yep, yep. <laughs> Goodbye. And uh, speed round again. Exactly what Syracuse could hope for. Nothing better than that. Four players staying alive and keeping those MP9s up. That means that this is gonna be a dangerous affair for them, all things considered. And at the very least, they've gotten their money in a position. Or they can play it out. And if this round doesn't quite go their way, then they should be able to stay afloat into the following, even so. Yeah, these MB9s can, can definitely do really uh, pack a punch, like especially at the B site. I'm playing in close connector. This is what they want to do, and I'm, I'm glad they're doing this. They're even doubling up on this right now. So they've actually taken connector control and short B, so this is some good real estate they have. 
but you can see that again csuf i mean they're kind of just waiting things out they're just in the playground they're playing in the sandbox and now they're ready to uh kind of do a little bit of exploring this is going to be where their exploring doesn't net them all too much but even so at least they've got one thing to write home about the fact that they've got a three versus three and guns that they could retrieve if they body up and push forwards for them now essentially still sticks and con he's got a little bit of assistance now to where if they want to walk back up these two mp9s can cluster and make something happen Yeah, the 3v3, and you already have one of the players in the site, so this is good. But again, the bomb being down, this is uh, not good right now for CSUF, but I mean, they can wait things out just a little bit. They're getting some good real estate single wish. Ah, that wish isn't going to be granted here, but a good trade coming back. The 2-2 two and two now. And this peak, I was thinking from Toxic, could have been dangerous, but instead he's going to be able to find another head, putting himself at 22 kills. I cannot believe it. That is quite the sight to behold, and to be completely honest with you, I didn't realize he was there. Uh, certainly helped out by that 4K and the pistol as well. Just trying to prove a threat to Q's, who has been constantly causing issues for both he and the squad. Time for him to become a little bit of a problem. As now... We're going to have to bow out and away, Shen, hearing a lot of bodies at the front side of A now can leave it over to his teammate in Long to be able to clean up a couple of stragglers as he will actually be dealt with himself with very little damage on the output. Yeah, and they might be able to get this bomb down too, so now they're actually going to swing through Long and Toxic actually loses that fight? Oh no! He had the full advantage, he had the range, he had the rifle, and he just gets annihilated. So now the bomb's going to be down. It's a four on three. Nades are coming in, double oh. on truck, and yeah, that, that's a player that go to sleep, and that's Q's. Airstrike. That's the gun down on the floor as well. The only other rifle but the AK of Christian now. Techline still plays comfortably outside of the truck. The tap not quite going to be landing, and now they're left into a pretty awkward position. They've got smoke, but what the hell are they going to use it for? Certainly need to fire down onto the players. Uh. First. Wait, inside. They've got a kit, and they've got the round, but all five die, and that is going to be a weird one, as this is going to be a curious purchase to try and play with for both teams, because either one should be in the dumps if they can't win it out here and now. Yeah, and it was really close, but again, it was just, again, the pistols that were able to find these openers, like this right here. Yeah. That was, that for me was kind of the full demise at one point. I mean, they didn't get the round, but they did so much damage in terms of just removing these guns. They should have enough for a full gun round, but again, it, it should have been a round that could have been cleaner from Syracuse. This is now the walk up. Very reminiscent to what we had seen from Syracuse side on the tee. They have seen this before. They were the pioneers of it. And it looks like maybe they might have met their match as we go into a 4v4 matching in the body count for the time. Now we've got to worry about how this off can reposition around the A site without much help. A little bit of supportive utility boost under the short wood wall. Well timed. Camera gets the kill. Quick rotate up. Easiest way to play from this with a man advantage. Yeah, just again, that little like micro detail, which like you just said, I mean, the fact they get the boost, they're able to find that kill kind of in a weird, you know, timing of the round. That's so important because I can just catch teams off guard and it does uh, CSUF. I mean, they weren't expecting that at all. Putting them down in the man. So now the executes coming in. Flashes are doing very well here from Syracuse. They just kind of, again, slow things down. That aggression. And oh no, the Galil not able to find a connect. Leaving it just down to red zone by himself on a one on four. And yeah, no, that one's, uh, that ain't happening. Why not? No, not quite. Uh, Syracuse certainly looking just that little bit more energetic than over on Anubis. They're making this one work. They're making it happen. And so far with the AWP once again, it's he now who wields it as he and Cameron seem to be going back and forth between maps. Maybe between how they're feeling on the day, but in general, sofer has been pretty hot on overpass thus far with the previously mentioned top scoreboard level of kills. Trying to oh, put Q's in his place and find himself up a place in that finals MVP board should they be able to take it to a third in either of these two teams to win out. But Shen following in that footstep of ending this game early, CSUF do claim the life of one man. Yeah, it kind of seems like they just really are looking a little deflated right now. I mean, oh. getting this first opening could be good, and all oh, this positioning. That's such a risky position to be in. You have to land that shot, and oh, there we what? go. This is the CSUF we know. This is the, where they get lethal 
and they've been able to just single-handedly take everybody away. And look at this, Syracuse, they're waving the white flag and they're out of here, man. They have no chance at all for this round. Not one bit. Now things start to collapse just a little bit. As I mentioned previously, the money is starting to dwindle just that little bit more. These two gun saved will keep them in good standings to where they will be able to contend with whatever CSUF have to throw their way into the following, but that won't be forever. The CT side is a cruel mistress in that sense now as they are going to be tested by at least Christian who's walking his way down these steps. It's somewhat of a crossfire to be set, so should one player go down, it's almost undoubtable that his teammate will be able to make good off of it, but that will not be happening anytime soon. Instead, they stop themselves at the top of those steps. Now, the final decision for the money to be made before they have to start questioning how close this tie back to 10-10 might come. But the T-side now, finally, having a little bit more, uh, I would say, coordinated patience uh, across the board than, than mm -hmm. previous. That was kind of just them running straight into a brick wall more often than not. Yeah, and that's what we saw in Anubis too, right? Yeah. From from CSUF. I mean, they were just kind of barreling in. They're just being aggressive. They're holding W and yeah, they're just, you know, taking names, chewing bubblegum, doing whatever they want to do. And that might be, you know, the tail of the tape here for them to get back to their old roots and be a little bit more aggro on this. They do find themselves that opener, but again, that quick trade is going to be Holy. a problematic situation. Those nades are not oh going to make it easier. And I don't know. That's four. Uh-oh. No kill. That's a good one from Toxic, though. Yeah, that's huge. That shot in the back, that really just crumbles what they had going for them into this one. Now having to worry about not only connector, not only front path, but now also long, taking that CT space even so slightly Bray dropping that smoke to try and keep them scared. A Molotov deep, the camera's not even made his way up. Hold on now, that stalled out three players, but it's going to be extinguished by the smoke that was too deep. They missed that, and they might miss their timing onto a round, especially when they've got somebody locking it in from the back, but now no, it's a full frontal assault from CT spawn, one up, one down. He's in the ground quicker than you could Set off a C4 on an A bomb site as they punch that code in about 30 seconds ago. Timer tick too low. And this one, it is going to be a CSUF win. Lucky to get away with that M4 if he doesn't go down to bomb, but that is going to be exactly what the doctor ordered to keep this one in contention for a 2 0. Oh, he dies. Yeah, and he does actually go down. I was kind of wondering, I was looking at the mini map. I'm like, I don't know if he's going to make this. Like, this timing is like, uh, he's a bit too close, right? Yeah. So, I mean, you could see, I mean, there was five rounds in a row that were being gained here right now for the CT side. Now we're starting to see those T rounds, you know, kind of creep back in. They're starting to feel a little bit better. We're talking in 10-9 right now. Syracuse do have that lead, but this is a now again the kind of the light deco round you have to just put pistols on the board to see what they can do they haven't been you know too successful with that whereas we saw csuf they had been you know just devastating and they're just going to run through monster man but look at this this is what i was talking about these guys have no fear at all but this actually might backfire wait kind of weird very weird about how this is standing with players flanking the flankers flank and Red zone, the better of them all. Is there? Look at there it is. That's the flanker flanking the flanker's flank. That's Cameron going double around under the T that was still left in the T spawn after all that long. And Red Zone bringing himself that one step closer, not only to the VAP victory, but also to being able to keep his stat line in check at 14 kills. And an important couple of kills to find, to be honest, seeing how that could have maybe fallen to the wayside had he not been there in time. Yeah, I mean, that was a huge round for Red Zone, too. I mean, I know that was a lighter, you know, purchase round from Syracuse, but he got himself a 4K, and like you said, he wanted to get himself back on the board. It's, he's been a little bit quiet so far, so that 4K puts him at 14 and 15 right now. He does have, you know, the AWP ready to go. Full purchase coming in here from Syracuse, and this is where it's starting to get a little bit too close for comfort. I mean, this was a big lead that coming in, and now look at, they just run through Monster again, and they are just gonna get themselves a sight. Unless this player in water does not get checked, Bray has to be able to find this, and his teammate's gonna do one better. They get themselves a free opening sight. Now, with this open sight, comes the risk of a retake. As that nade does land, will it incentivize them to keep their way forwards? It will. The CT spawn. Another 1v1 found. Teammates not able to refrag just yet. Still ever hungry for that fight though, knowing the Molotov is going to lock them in regardless of win or lose. They'll take it, they'll lose it, but it won't matter. It'll stall them out for just long enough to where they have to bow out. And approaching that 30 bomb is Sofer, but what will it matter if they can't win out this game now as the lead is lost? 
Yeah, Toxic's done such a great job. Like, again, just finding, you know, almost 30 kills. But again, it's not, it doesn't really matter at this point because they're kind of letting this lead slip. Now it's finally going to be transitioned over here for California State. So, you know, they were quiet. They, they didn't find any success in five rounds. And all of a sudden now, they're able to bring back four rounds in a row. And all they're doing is running and gunning, baby. That's what they want to do. And that's what they're going to do to keep getting themselves more rounds. But timeouts, they're going to happen. They're going to come through, and, and rightfully so. Why not? I, I mean, look, look, like. Yeah. What do you do? Uh... I mean, Syracuse, like, look at this money. I mean, they're, they're actually going to go for it. Yeah, they're going to. Ooh. Damn. <laughs> I don't know. I'm nervous. Walk I'm, me through I'm, your like, brain right there with that. Man, with that I am was... nervous. Like, I'm, I'm, I really am. I'm. I'm if this falls apart, I can hear your desk shaking. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm terrified. I can hear your, your boots quivering. Yes, I am shaking in my boots right now. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, the best, the best thing to calm down the nerves, they say, is uh, commentating CS2 and the Open Premier Finals of Nace Starley. So you're in the right place at the right time. But, will, will Soper be in the right place at the right time alone towards A? He's chilling here, hoping that the cavalry will be on its way soon enough, and as it does make its way through, up and over. There's no smokes, there's no mollies, there's just bodies out and over. There's one towards the truck, but just enough of an advantage in terms of the information for Soper to take his two. Swings off of his teammate's 30 bomb, and the MP9 still stands tall, making this one a much more difficult affair than I think CSUF will be. Oh man, and the fact he's able to win that fight too, but leaving it just down to red zone, he's just getting bit tagged here with the MP9, and okay, that buy's gonna come out, you're gonna put him back in the tie, it works out miraculously for him, and oh boy, like I said, that could have been problematic if they lost, but you know what, it'll pan out, we're back to a tie game. Tie game, it's been kind of the story of Overpass so far. Towards the end, at the very least. No, and honestly, towards the end of that first half, even it was like the four-four, then five-five, and then the lead extended ever so slightly. But since then, it's just been a, a war of attrition, and really pulling a majority of the team's weight right now is Sofer. But how much more can you really expect him to be able to do that for? Yeah, ever? I don't know. Yeah, I really don't know. So that guy's Singlish. name who pushes the boulder, uh, like, infinitely? The myth of Sisyphus, is that it? Or am I thinking of something oh. completely different? Oh, I think you're thinking of something different. All right. That's okay, though. I like where your head's at. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Not like this. It is Sisyphus. I was right. <laughs> oh, you were right. Okay, well, I'm a liar. I don't know. Oh, no. Not again. No. Oh, my God. It's happening. Oh, it's happening. They just take a sight. Finally get a bit of reply. These CTs, they're finding multi-kills. I don't know what's going on, man. This is too much of a roller coaster for me. Hey, Cameron. I'm sure he's uh, not really liking the ride that he's on right now. He's saying, get me out. Get me off this crazy thing. Because as it stands, it's getting a little bit too violent for his likings. He drops the Molotov towards Monster Tunnel, forces one back, forces one forwards. In isolation, the smoke of the bomb will cause him to fight both with the short players. And as they do so in tandem, he might lose his life, but salute the soldier that has fallen as it's not he who will die in vain. It's 12 map, match, series, tournament, circuit, and grand finals point. Absolutely massive. Yeah, I mean, you can see these highlights. And I mean, you can see that. I think that was Shen that was just kind of sitting there and waiting and he's able to find that, you know, opera. I mean... Oh man, I just, that's so unfortunate here for Syracuse. I mean, they had the offer just sitting water and I mean, he was waiting things out, but he just gets overwhelmed. And now it's the, the scrappiest of buys. Look at the utility. I mean, they got double smokes with double flashes really with, or triple flash, sorry, but this is tough. And I mean, look, they're just even gonna push this and Bray now gets himself one, maybe two. Yes, please. Yes, please. Wham, blam, thank you, ma'am. Brings them that one step closer to their ultimate goal. Their share of the number one, the $5,000 prize pool. Emptied into their pockets primarily as they now have only three players standing between them and just such a victory.
Two at B, one at A, one with a UMP of all things. As they go through that flash, Shen is way too late to react to that. That is crazy how long it takes him to turn. He'll be blinded, he'll be fragged, teammate no chance, UMP not the greatest weapon for the job, and EWP at range, I'll tell you what, that's the best weapon for this job, Red Zone. Take your swing, my friend, because there is one player, and one player only, and despite him having clutched the 1v4 before, it won't be now, and that will be the closer. The final shot to seal the nail into the coffin for the victory, 2-0 in the grand finals of Open Premier. It's CSUF, the California State University Fullerton team getting it done. Yeah, they get it done in a 2-0 fashion. They, they you know, kind of run us through a quick one on Anubis, but then they made it really close. Bit of a nail-biter here for the second, but again, you got to tip your hat. I mean, that was a good, you know, little bit of life coming back from Syracuse, but it just wasn't enough. I mean, you yeah. saw the one player, I think that was Toxie, he was sitting at, like, what, 32 kills? Like, yeah. he went beast mode this game, man, and he still couldn't find it, unfortunately, for him, but... Love that we were able to get this uh, to be a bit more scrappy right to the full distance. Yeah, absolutely. And the money that they've gotten, the, the tournament winnings and all the things that go into making Nace possible, it's just one of many, but Extra Life having more than 100 players from over 20 teams active in their super team page, having worked together to raise $32,000 uh, over the course of this year. Join the growing list of the NACE Star League schools today. And if you've already created an Extra Life team, then why not connect with us on the NACE Star League Discord to get your fundraising initiatives amplified? Because that's the place to start and that's where things become a lot greater for not only yourself, but the collegiate scene and everyone inside of it. Ladies and gentlemen, we will be right back with the interview from the winning team and we'll have everything wrapped up nice and neat with a little bow on top in just a few for myself and Laz. Don't go anywhere.
All right. Well, thus concludes the match itself, but not done with business are we. Still a few loose ends to tie up and a still a lot to be heard from one particular player on the side of CSUF before we close things out. And that is going to be none other than Qs, an absolute star I, in the server individually. Welcome. And how are you, first of all? I am on cloud nine right now. <laughs> yeah. You know, all the hard work paid off. <laughs> Feels good. Yeah, talk Feels to me great. about the emotions towards the end. How are you guys ramping up to where you finally felt obviously overtime could have been on the way or it was that that game win. That was the 12 to 11. Uh, pretty much we've been in that spot a few times, you know, and these guys trust my calls no matter what. And I was just like, you know what? We're just going to do the exact same things we've been doing. Everyone just chill, calm, relax. We were, we were a little tense, so sitting the round mm -hmm. out helped us a lot. And uh, just waiting out, and then we got our nerves settled, and we we uh, executed and did our game plan was, and obviously succeeded in that. Yeah, that's awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Again, congratulations to you because that was a huge victory for you guys. You guys just steamrolled the first map. I mean, I don't know if you guys just had a full read on what was going on for Anubis, but maybe walk me through it because it just felt like you guys picked a spot and you would just take it over. Like there was no contention, right? Like it was just easy for you. Yeah. Yeah. So. Our Anubis were literally undefeated on Anubis ever. We have never lost the map. We beat Northwood on it first seed, beat them now in the grand finals. You know, the second best team in the league, I guess you would say. And uh, we just do what we normally do, everyday business. We just default. And I just, I don't know what it is about that map for some reason. I, I just came back not too long ago into the scene and Anubis was added and I wasn't like super familiar, but like, I, for some reason, love the feeling of that map and I can understand it, the rotations and everything like that. and I would just call what I was feeling. You know, there's not really much thought to it rather than I, you know, I think this is the right move. Let's, you know, go as a team. And the fact that they all trust me, like undoubtedly, they'll do whatever I say, no questions asked. And everyone's mm -hmm. the same mindset, same mentality. It works every time, you know? So it's a great feeling to have with that too, with these guys. Yeah. So uh, I was just speaking a little bit with your, I don't know if it was your manager or whoever about just the team in yeah. general uh, before, before the game. And I got the information that it was red zone, Christian and Famous who were basically the core for the last two seasons of this team. And then yeah. you and Bray came along. Was that just for this season? And if so, or if it was the last season, regardless, how do you build a team with two new additions really where you're also the captain? Do you feel like it was more of a restructuring on your end where you had to take it from top to bottom or was there already a lot in place that you could work with? Uh, so when I first joined, they were pretty uh, puggy in the way they played. Like they didn't have, like they had structure. They had set structure, and, you know, they had like you know where they played and stuff like that. Obviously, set down their default and stuff. But um, other than that, they didn't really have like a main voice and a main structure who would call uh, upon what they had set. It was kind of just up in the air. And I I would an ECL for a little bit. Um, you know, season forty six or something. Or not forty six. That one. Something. I'm on ECL right now. Two years Actually, ago. 35, I found it. Yeah. 35, sorry. 30, I don't know. 36 is last season. I don't know why I'm saying 46. But, you know, I had yelled <laughs> then, and I was just like, you know, um, why? You know, I, I secondary call my advanced team a little bit here uh, now, and I feel so, super comfortable doing it. And I kind of came in, and uh, I met the guys and stuff like that. We had a really good, like, connection, and we got along very well. And I kind of told them, you know, not not in like a rude way i mean but i was gonna say it's my way or the highway because yeah you know i i don't want to mess around and just waste my time i want to like win i want to compete i want to do well so we got in the server and we just sat down every single map we spent a few hours easy you know this is where you're gonna be this is where you're gonna go right. everything and just laid it down an entirely new uh brickwork and i played the players move stuff around because each player you know has a good feeling of what they like to do and i, I got a good feeling of their tendencies and what roles it would be and stuff so kind of right. built it from the ground up after that uh thanks to my experience that i had previously so yeah that's awesome yeah and one of the things that was really interesting too is like for someone like you that's obviously new in the team you kind of build things around the system you want you also had yourself a bit of a field day today. I mean, you had two Shoot. big maps where you were just popping heads. You were putting your numbers on the stat board. And uh, I don't know, yeah. like, were you just, were you fully prepared? Like, did you do a lot of research on this team you're playing? Or was it really just, you know, you ate the Wheaties or something and you were feeling really good? I have no uh, idea. I mean, I was fully confident in my team that we would win this matchup because we saw their uh, scoreline on Anubis and Ancient and that they were kind of rattled in the map pool. And they didn't really have a strong map they would pick in theory. And 
we knew they were going to ban our nuke. We beat Northwood 13-4 on nuke. Like, obviously, they're going to ban nuke. They permanent ban nuke the entire season sort of thing. Uh, and we just knew, you know, this is our this is our game to lose, essentially. We have our map pool that we like. We have every map that we want. And we just came in confident. I was feeling really confident about it because I didn't have a doubt in my guys at all. You know, I'm super proud of them <clears> and that they came this far in the season. You know, Braden's never been on a team before. Moose hasn't really played high-level Counter-Strike. Christian's never been on a team before. Uh, and, you know, I just have red zone experience. And I came in confident that they've done this much this and I was like, you know what? Let's just go all out and let's have a good win right here. And I was feeling it like that because I love these guys. So, yeah, and I, I guess that really does sum up the game: is that you, you felt the you felt the team, you felt the energy, you felt the maps that you played, and from top to bottom, yep. it looked like you were in the driver's seat for a majority of it. I wouldn't even say a scare on overpass; just probably not necessarily the easiest of circumstances to play through. But even yeah. when you were winning, you were winning. So yeah, it's yeah, good yeah. to see and a feel good moment surely from you guys as well. Yeah. So is there anybody that you want to thank or talk about, uh, whether it be in or outside of your team or anybody while you have the chance? Well, just, I mean, just my guys, my, you know, yeah, well, if the moves, Ethan, Braden, Ray, Christian, Christian and Christopher red zone. I love these guys inside and out. You know, we hang out at school, you know, in the game all day, you know, yeah. every day. We, we, and you're all on campus. Death and back. Yeah. We, uh, we all go to school on campus together. <laughs> Yeah, so I, I, you know, I love these guys uh, to the world and back, and uh, you know, just all my friends that are watching, and uh, you know, we have new sponsors like ESP Tiger and Genji and stuff. So right. thanks to them too for always supporting us and looking out for us, and we, we really appreciate it a lot. And I love the program, and yeah, I just love everybody. Appreciate it, and thanks for hosting the league, and thanks for casting. Really appreciate it. you guys. It's great. We're gonna watch it back for sure. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, yeah. Thank you guys. Congratulations. Yeah, congrats. Thank you. Enjoy it. Yeah, thank you. Bye-bye. Well, yeah, really interesting uh, couple notes. I mean, for me, like really humble, right? I love that. I oh, mean, yeah. you know, did did a lot of homework, felt really good. You know, like you, I, I think that was a good question, bringing up like how did the structure work in this uh -huh. team because he was new. So the fact that he was like, okay, hey, look, I know you guys are a core, but I want to build a system. Let's do the system. And to have that much trust, it, that's not an easy thing to earn here. But I mean, like we said, I mean, he had himself a, a great series. He individually played well, but I think even his calling is something that we noticed a lot out of this. Uh, I mean, overpass was a little bit, you know, back and forth, but I mean, they were able to come back when they were in a huge deficit too. So, I mean, that gives you another big props as an IGL because that's always a feel good moment. Yeah, 100%. Always going to feel good in those moments, and they made it look good as well. I mean, it's not really going to be too much of uh, an argument to be had that they didn't look like they were a well-oiled machine throughout that entire game. I mean, overpass maybe here and there a little too quick, uh, maybe sometimes a little too slow, but obviously that's the name of the game. Overpass is not a map you can really dictate the pace and be confident with not knowing what's going on on the other end. The CT side always pulling a new, new name out of the hat of who's playing on you know the stack towards maybe long or the, 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 the con stack that they had on their eco rounds. So navigating through those situations and maintaining pace without having to go to OT or map three is just a huge dub for them as well. No, definitely. But again, you know, that's going to be the end of this, the whole thing. I mean, this is the grand final, but of course we got to give some uh, good information, got to give some good shout outs for things, you know, for this to be oh, all yeah. here and for everything to happen. And just for anybody that isn't aware, of course, there is registration through the Hearthstone competition. So you can actually, you know, sign up through the link, which is nsl.leaguespot.gg. So you can get yourself registered today get yourself gaming and of course as well as uh then the nice star league is in full partnership with ubisoft they have a video series later this fall featuring select schools they're actively involved in the rainbow six community does your school have a strong competition program or a vibrant community we want to hear from you and you can actually apply from playfly.com slash rainbow six yeah, and along with that, we'd like to thank our sponsors for helping us bring this season to life and make everything possible, really. Uh, CDW, Alienware, Pizza Hut, Extra Life, Monster Energy, Duncan, Mavix, Odyssey, Mushroom, Elixir, the U.S. Army ROTC, and LA Comic Con. All of them giving exactly what NACE needs to be able to make these special moments happen, to be able to have these magic moments and bring these broadcasts to your computer screen. And just that... Thank you to you guys. Thank you to the people who watch. Thank you to those who tune in to not only this broadcast, but everyone produced. We as casters, and I'm sure as a production team behind us, are all very thankful for you guys making this possible, for joining us on this journey. But that will conclude us. Laz, anything you want to say before we close shop? No, I think you did a pretty good job. But yeah, thanks again, everybody, for tuning in. A great season and a fun one for us to, you know, have uh, commentating here for the Grand Finals. But that's going to be it. We're done. Thank you so much, and we'll see you another day and another time.